Good morning. Uh, this is Okinaw, uh, bringer of life, life and life, and my broadcast is Daniel Okinaw. And um, this morning I want to talk about one of the greatest teachings in the Native American world, which is on the medicine wheel. You know, the medicine wheel brings good medicine, good teaching, and uh, things that uh, we really need to apply to our life. Uh, before that, I'd like to start with a song honoring um, the clan mother of the Bird Clan, Dorothy Taylor, who was in the movie Last of the Mohegans, uh, who also adopted me into the Chelagi. And so uh, this is a song from that uh, particular movie. The medicine wheel. Medicine wheel um, has its origins, I believe, in nature and the universe. You know, our earth is round, planets are round, you know, we have the circle of life, we have the sun and the moon, and so creation shows a circular design. Native American and indigenous people correspond in their circular lives, the circle of life. Teepees are in circles, native dance circles are in circles, meetings between chiefs and elders are usually done in circles. Uh, it's interesting to me that the shape of the medicine wheel is the same uh, shape as the Paleo-Hebrew letter Tet, which means surrender to Grandfather Creator and his leadership. Uh, many believe that indigenous tribes are really a part of the Lost Ten Tribes of Israel. Uh, for instance, the Cherokee had cities of refuge, had an Ark of the Covenant they brought into battle, had uh, lunar festivals, traced their roots back to Joseph, who married Asnath, um, an Egyptian woman. And uh, so it's like there's a lot of um, evidence. There's a book called uh, Out of the Flames by James Adair. He was an anthropologist that lived with the tribes in the 17th century for 37 years, studied the language and the culture, and he concluded the same thing. Um, now, what is the meaning of the medicine wheel? Well, the outer circle represents the circle of life, our lives, and the journeys that we go on in our life. And the center of the circle represents Grandfather Creator, who's the center of all life, who's the creator of all life. There's four directions. Uh, actually, it's like a cross in the middle. And the four directions respond to the earthly directions of the two poles, sun rising, sun set. Uh, you also have four colors uh, that bring meaning to the gatekeeper uh, of the entranceway. And so different tribes have different colors representing the medicine wheel. But I'd like to bring what um, basically... Uh, I feel are some of the colors that uh, are in the medicine wheel today. Along the outside and in the inner circle are spirit animals that represent different teachings for native indigenous people. The inner circle uh, gives us connection to the spirit world and to the supernatural reality. And then um, when you approach the medicine wheel, usually you approach it through ceremony and smudging. The seven directions usually start by honoring the heavens, then the earth, Mother Earth, then your own self, and then the four directions. And um, that is a way to basically do Native American protocol for entrance. Not only that, that's the same thing that's done in the dance circle. I've been um, arena director at a particular powwow for the last four years, and I, I always do that before any dances take place. And of course, 
grass dancers come in and bless the grounds as well. Um, the first gate I'd like to talk about is the east gate, which is the entrance point where the gatekeeper is, and that's called the good red road of living a good life. And so the east gate contains a spirit animal called the eagle, and the eagle represents supernatural life and the creator. And the eagle teaches us to soar above um, the darkness of this earth and to look at things from a supernatural perspective. We as natives approach the supernatural in the spirit, not with our mind necessarily, like the Western world. The next gate is the West Gate, which is black. It's the place of crossing over to the spirit world, to the next life, and from that life back, oftentimes during sweat lodge, ancestors kind of show up and give us teaching. Or like recently, I was in um, a longhouse up on the Oneida Reserve, and they started speaking the language. And I felt ancestors showing up when the language was again rekindled in that tribe. And so um, the West Gate represents... Uh, the crossing over, and there's the spirit animal there is the bear, Yona in the Cherokee language. And the bear is the one that guides and helps us cross over in the medicine wheel. Then uh, there's the south gate, which um, is yellow usually, and it's a source of light. And the spirit animal there is the coyote, which teaches us to survive, because the coyote is a survival animal. Also on the south gate are the grandmothers that uh, usually take place. And I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but back in the early days of uh, real clan life, the clan mothers appointed chiefs and removed them. Clan mothers were the ones that um, really were responsible for a lot of tribal life. Basically back uh, before the Westerners came, they were on the drum. They were also uh, leading in terms of the sweat lodge. And so I honor the grandmothers, I honor my grandmother, Dorothy, who uh, basically adopted me into the Cherokee, gave me a Cherokee name. Also, there's the North Gate, which represents a source of winter, which is usually white. But the spirit animal there is the white buffalo. And the white buffalo is associated with receiving the bundle with the pipe that the Lakota received. For, and usually when we do ceremony, we do a lot of uh, pipe ceremony from pipe carriers who, who are very skillful in that area. In Sweat Lodge, we do pipe ceremonies. So you see that um, there are teachings in the medicine wheel. For instance, there's some other spirit animals I'd like to share. One is the deer, uh, which is closer to the south. It teaches us to be alert because of the big ears that deer have. Uh, the salmon um, up in closer to the uh, west gate teaches us to overcome obstacles. You know, there's three ways that you can go upstream. One is the easy way, which is where most of the bears are. Or you can go up the steps, which is harder, and there's fewer bears, but the really best way is to go up the waterfall, and that's the most difficult. You have to fly and soar up the waterfall, and there's fewer bears up there. And that's usually successful for the salmon to go and lay eggs and so on. It teaches us that we don't always take the easy way out in life, that sometimes we have to face uh, steep obstacles. And so these animals teach us things, like the snake, uh, also closer to the northwest, teaches us that we need to strip away the old snake skins of our our life. And usually around uh, New Year's we do um, sweat lodge and we strip off the old snake skins of the past year. And uh, it's usually a, a pretty good uh, ceremony. Also the cougar teaches us to take a leap of faith and it's usually associated with the male spirit. Then there's the wolf which is the feminine spirit which is the other side of the cougar. And in the inner circle there's one, the butterfly has four different phases of blossoming. You have uh, the egg, then you have the caterpillar, which is very limited. It can only go to one or two branches of a tree, but then it forms a cocoon and it dies. And then a whole new animal is born in that cocoon with wings and the butterfly can soar to continents. And so it teaches us to really die to the things that um, we want in terms of the flesh but learn how to soar 
you know, the women's Shaw dances are like butterflies flying around the arena. They're, they're almost like on their tiptoes as they dance. And so uh, the butterfly teaches us about how to soar in life. Um, in the Native American dance circles, uh, powwow dancing is done inside of the medicine wheel. So when you have grand entry, you enter in through the East Gate, which is the good red road. And then you dance. As you dance, you do worship because it's, it's done in a sacred way. It's not just a performance for Westerners to look at. It's actually uh, worship that takes place. For instance, the Ojibwe uh, started the jingle uh, uh, dance. And inside of each of the 365 jingles is a prayer for the tribe. As they dance, they're actually praying for the tribe uh, and so on. And so it's like, uh, you know, there's the blessing of the ground by the grass dancer and so on. Each dance has a worship element to it inside of the medicine wheel that we dance inside of. So it's a very sacred circle. When I do my eagle dance, no one's allowed to take pictures because it's a very sacred ceremony representing the supernatural world. And I only do it maybe once a year and that's it. In Sweat Lodge, is, there's a medicine wheel inside of there and we enter through the East Gate again into the deep uh, hole of, that represents the womb of, of Mother Earth. And so when we go in, we acknowledge all our relations and we connect with all our relations through the East Gate as we go into the medicine wheel and we go into the various um, directions inside the medicine wheel. We also do pipe uh, ceremony inside of the medicine wheel. And so as we go in, we go in uh, with humility humbling ourselves, lowering ourselves inside of the medicine wheel of the sweat lodge. Also, uh, there's supernatural teachings to Native uh, Americans from the medicine wheel that I, I can't go into at this time, but there's just a lot of teachings associated with the medicine wheel. It's a very important um, uh, object in the Native American world. Uh, now, I have my own personal spin on the medicine wheel. I believe that the red road represents uh, the uh, sacrificial blood of Creator Son, who uh, made access into the very presence of the Creator. And that's the gate that we enter into, which also helps to give hope for the time of death and hope for uh, crossing over into the next life. So it overcomes the dark side and the, and the blackness of the West so that it could, again, produce the light that's coming from the Creator in our lives so that we can radiate life and have clothing of light as we go through this world and then produce the purity of the white of the uh, northern side of the medicine wheel. So this is my personal spin on the medicine wheel from my personal sense of spirituality. I have a poem that I've written about the medicine wheel I want to read. And you can see I have it in my book, uh, basically on the back of a turtle. And this is how it goes. The native world is in circles, teepee, medicine wheel, and drum. Sacred dance arena, native hoop. Sacred fires, pipe, and talking circles. Sweat lodges and wigwams are the sum. The circle of life, animal medicine, reflect our clans. A symbol of the universe, sun, moon, planets, and stars, our creator's plans. Medicine wheel is a circle across a uh, creator in the center and the four directions. Access points from the circle of life to and from our creator's weak to strong, strong to weak. From the sunrise east, the red road gives entrance through the gate. Blood sacrifice of Creator Son, Shekinah glory, anointing has begun. Third heaven living with visions and dreams, which we have in Sweat Lodge, by the way. The supernatural, our home, overcomes the black of the West. Death, evil, the dark side is shown. Leading to the light of the South, radiating through unfragmented whole, diamond lives. Then to the north, the white of the purity and intimacy, love from above, all in balance, wholeness in the circle of life and death. Sky above, Mother Earth below, the four directions blessed, all smudged, including my inner heart. 
origin, find the Paleo-Hebrew, the letter Tet, a lesson there to find only if you're smart. Animal medicine takes their place at the four direction gates. The soaring golden eagle in the east, Yahweh's clan. Coyote in the south knows how to survive his plan. Yonah the bear in the west uh, lives, lives in the now and now and helps us face our death. White buffalo in the north brings blessing after winter snow. Those are just a few you should know. Finally, sweat lodge a medicine wheel inside. Enter with humility, bent low into Mother Earth's womb. Stripped of all to be cleansed. Old snakeskins removed. Burning blazing rocks from sacred fire, glowing with red heat, placed in the center. Water poured, consumed with prayers. Steam sweat inside Mother's womb. Visions, supernatural revelations. Spirit pictures appear. Personal repentance, unfulfilled lives, soon bring a tear. New names and identities, a future and a hope. Clear vision with red road opens. Reconciliation with, sec with the sacred hoop, uh, which represents the community, by the way. The pipe is passed. Recommitment begins. A two-spirit warrior cleansing and healing from the life of sin. All is new. Aho. And then I have one on just one of the spirit animals, which is the eagle, called Eagle's Wind. It's a very brief one. My heart soars with Yahweh from above. The soaring eagle is filled with love. On Eagle's Wind, the roark flow, flies. Portals open high above the skies. Rainbows circle in outward birthing stance. Sacred Eagle Dancer begins his dance. Honor the four directions, earth and sky. Yeshua's kingdom comes, oh me, oh my. Birthing release, a new baby comes. Seventh fire ignited, native people no longer shunned. Indigenous values once more embraced. The environment, the water can now be tasted. The message of the peacemaker extended to the world. Shalom, salam, goodbye to war, terror, love unfurled. Eighth fire now come with Yahweh's reign, gone away, all grief, sorrow, and pain. I do a lot of writing in terms of Native American uh, beliefs and values, and so today I just wanted to cover the medicine wheel, which is a very important part of the Native American life. Aho!